welcome back. And there's a couple things that I wanna try and tackle today with the vacuum tube computer. And the first is a little mundane, but it has to do with what do we call this thing that we're building? Uh, up to now, I've been calling the processor the UE14500. And I think that's a perfect name for it because it is an Usagi Electric vacuum tube implementation of the Motorola MC14500 but it is just a small part of a much larger system. The processor currently takes up one board, and I think ultimately when the computer is all said and done, we can potentially get it out to six total boards. We have the processor, we have the vacuum tube memory that we're currently working on, we'll have program control, which will hopefully have some reel-to-reel -reel stuff bolted to it, uh, we have um, input-output, which hopefully will let us talk to a data terminal or a uh, teletype. And then we have two boards for memory expansion to hopefully get the machine up to a more usable level of random access memory. But it is a huge system. I mean, physically huge, as well as the scope of the project that we have to tackle. Uh, and we'll talk about the physicality of it here in a minute. Uh, but just calling it the UE14500 doesn't encompass the entire thing that we're building. So I've just been calling it the UEVTC or the Usagi Electric Vacuum Tube Computer, but that feels a little too generic. Uh, all the vacuum tube computers of the day had unique names, IBM 604 or 650. I'm sure IBM had some methodology to the numbers that they chose, or LGP30 or Univac. Um, so they all had very unique names, and UEVTC feels maybe a little too generic. So I wanted to throw it out to you guys and see if y'all had any ideas about what to call this huge machine that we're building. Uh, so if you do, leave a comment below or hit me up on Discord or uh, reach out to me any which way you can, and we'll start trying to figure out a good name for it. Uh, now, rewinding a little bit, talking about the physicality of it or how physically large this thing is going to be, I'm already starting to run into trouble with that because the, well, the processor is complete, but now we're working on the memory and I'm getting to a point where I need to start bolting boards to a uh, large backboard that is the same size as the processor, which means I'm going to have uh, two one meter tall by 0.7 meter wide chunks of wood with vacuum tubes bolted to them floating around. So I need to find some kind of mounting solution to uh, at least keep those safe. Uh, so I had a couple ideas about things that I wanted to build and well, we've got a lot of scrap wood out in the garage. So let's hop out to the garage, pull out some uh, scrap stuff that we have and see what we can build up. And it may not be what we ultimately end up going with, but it'll be at least be something to keep them mounted and safe for the time being. So let's hop out there and get started. First things first, we need to make the backboard for the memory just like we made for the processor. And the wood that I'm using for it is actually the same hardwood that we use for our flooring inside the house. We just had a whole lot left over and it looks pretty good. So I just need to measure up eight of these at 70 centimeters wide, give them a cut and then stack them all up. And eight of them stacked end to end comes out to exactly one meter. Then I use another one of these pieces, I cut it to one meter long, and then I cut it in half lengthways. And these are the pieces that I use to hold the whole thing into shape. And uh, yeah, that seems to have turned out pretty good. Now it's time to start figuring out where to mount this. And after digging around in the garage, I found these old art easels that my uh, father built for my mother many, many years ago. Uh, however, since art is pretty lightweight and the vacuum tube computer is decidedly not, uh, the play in this is definitely going to need to be fixed. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to cut the lower tray a little shorter and then chamfer the edges so that they butt up against the easel correctly. And then I'm gonna attach them with a single screw and that should let the tray sit flush on the ground while the easel itself is at a bit of an angle. And uh, that looks pretty good, so let's give it a test fit. And yeah, that's, uh, that's coming together pretty nicely. The tray for the upper piece, however, needs lowering. So it's time to drill some new holes 
And with those holes drilled, I can now bolt it in its new place a little lower with these nice wing nuts on the back. And uh, yeah, that's a much better fit between the lower and upper. So let's lift the lower piece to the upper piece and see how it fits. And whew, that's, uh, <laughs> that's gonna be pretty tall. All right, so there's still a little more work to do. First, I wanna cut off the excess off of the top and I don't wanna take the whole thing apart so I can cut it on the table saw. So I'm just gonna uh, cut it with the handsaw here. And then I'm also going to shorten up the stabilizer leg. But while I have the stabilizer leg off, I'm going to put a new hinge in place of the old hinge that had a lot of play in it. Uh, and then I'm going to put a new piece to keep that stabilizing leg nice and solid instead of the chain that was being used before. And wow, that's coming together pretty nicely. So let's give it a sand and then we will hit it with some oil to hopefully shine it up and make it look pretty nice. And here is what we've built. It is, it's huge. Um, <laughs> now I'm not a short person. I, when I stand up straight, I know I have pretty bad posture, but when I stand up straight, I measure in at about uh, six foot four, maybe six foot five on a good day, uh, which I think is about 195 centimeters tall. And well, I mean, you can see it's taller than me. Uh, and that actually makes perfect sense. We've got two of these boards stacked on top of each other with a little bit of leeway in the middle. So this thing's actually probably uh, two meters, maybe 2.1 meters tall. So it's, <laughs> it's really big, uh, which is kind of strange to have the soft start be above my head. Uh, but the good thing about this is that the actual footprint on the ground is pretty small. It's it's a triangle, but if we measure it out, it's maybe a little under a meter wide and uh, probably about 60 centimeters deep or so. Um, so the footprint is small, which is fantastic for this relatively small room. So I can slide it around and kind of get it out of the way. Uh, but as we get more and more boards, this is going to become completely untenable because it's just going to end up taking up a huge amount of floor space anyways. And well, there's some other big problems with this. And the first one, the major one, is that when I was designing the uh, processor here, as well as the memory that's going to go down here, I was designing it based on the fact that it was sitting on my table horizontally. Uh, so all of the VFDs, which are directional, are facing down because when it's sitting horizontally, that's how I can see it. Uh, but now that it's standing up vertically like this, I can't see any of the VFDs. Now I could tilt them back a little bit. I don't have a whole lot of room. The design wasn't designed around those VFDs being laid flat on the PCBs. And that could make the sum of the processor VFDs visible, but the memory VFDs are going to pretty much be totally invisible. You can't see them at all. Uh, so I have, some ideas about maybe how to get around that, like putting a reflector in front of it or something. But ultimately, I think we're going to have to end up with a different design for this, particularly as we get more boards. So I sat down and I sketched out some ideas for some future designs. And so let's hop over to the bench and I wanna show you guys those sketches and get your ideas about what you think. Um, and then maybe if you have any extra ideas or better ideas on top of that, I would love to hear it. So let's hop over to the bench, take a look at potential future sketches. First things first, let's take a look at the four main criteria that I'm judging all of the individual designs by. And the first criteria is the footprint. How much space does it take up in my fairly small room here? The second is portability. How easy is it to take apart and move? Uh, most notably, I wanna be able to throw this into the back of an SUV and drive it up to the uh, local retro computing meetup and let people play with it in person. The third is going to be heat management. When the computer is all said and done, it's going to be using on the order of kilowatts of power and 98% of that is going towards the filaments. So it's going to be putting out a phenomenal amount of heat. And the final criteria is visibility. How easy is it to see the individual PCBs and how easy is it to see the VFD indicators? So looking at the tall boy that we just built today, the overall footprint is initially good, but I think it's going to scale poorly. There's a lot of dead space behind the easels and really the only way to get a good look at all six boards is to have them side by side, which means that we're going to end up with something about three meters wide. 
However, portability is really pretty good. The boards can come off of the easel with relative ease and the easel itself can be collapsed into a very flat piece. Now there is going to be some setup and tear down time involved, but overall it's pretty good. Heat management is really fantastic because uh, all of the tubes are right out in the open and there can be lots of airflow across them. And then finally, visibility is questionable. We can see all of the PCBs fantastically, but we can't see any of the VFDs. Now the next design idea I had was this one, which I'm calling the pinball design idea because it kind of resembles how a pinball machine uh, looks. And it is two boards at a relatively shallow angle, maybe around uh, 40 degrees or so, with uprights on all four corners. And since there's just two per, that means that we need, well, three of these. And so if we think about the footprint, it's not quite as bad as the easel, but it's close. Uh, the easel has a little more width to it than the actual width of the boards, and that'll add up when you get three of them side by side, and I believe this design won't have that additional width but we gain uh, quite a bit more depth. The portability is about the same as the tall boy uh, if it's built right. We should be able to pull the boards off with relative ease, throw it onto the back of an SUV and go. Now the heat management is good, but not as good as the tall boy because the board that is on the bottom half is in somewhat of an enclosed space. So I'll need to think about how to get some airflow across that. Finally, the visibility on this one is uh, really probably the best out of all of the ideas that I've had so far. The only thing that would be difficult to see would be whatever is on the lower board at the back. Uh, but other than that, the VFDs should all be very clearly visible and the PCBs should all be clearly visible as well. The next design idea that I had is what I'm calling the file cabinet idea because it's very similar to a filing cabinet. Uh, essentially, we'll have all of the boards on rails, kind of like the uh, rails that our large Hawk drive sits on, and you'll be able to slide each board in and out. Now, for footprint, this one is fantastic. It only will take up one meter by 0 0.7 meters, and that's it. Also for portability, this one is by far and away the best. I don't even need to take anything apart, just unplug it from the wall, have a little clasp that locks the boards in place, throw it in the back of an SUV and away we go. However, heat management is an absolute nightmare. It's going to be so hot inside of that box that you could probably cook dinner on top of it. So there's going to need to be a ton of cooling fans on the back or maybe even on the sides. Also, visibility is pretty much non-existent. Even if I make the box clear, you can only ever see the top board or whichever board you have pulled out. And then the last idea that I had is what I'm calling the Cray because uh, the design was kind of inspired by the way that the Cray supercomputer was designed. And essentially we've got uh, the boards fanning out like a book standing on edge. Now the overall footprint of this is pretty good. Ultimately, we're only going to be about one and a half meters by one meter. And it's not going to be ridiculously tall either. Portability is incredibly contingent on how I build the design, but I might be able to lock each of the leaves in position here, and that could hold everything in place, and I could just put the whole thing in the back of a SUV as it is without needing to take anything apart. Heat management should be pretty good. Uh, in the center, we'll have two boards back to back, and then each board will be fanned out from there, but there's no boards above or below any others, and there's no enclosed space here. So it should radiate a ton of heat out the top of it, but there shouldn't be too much heat soak itself on the actual machine. And then finally, visibility. Uh, this one is about the same as the tall boy. All of the circuit boards will be very easily and clearly seen, but we won't be able to see any of the VFDs. So there are my four design ideas. We have the tall boy, we have the pinball machine, the filing cabinet, and the very slow cray. Uh, so let me know what you guys think of these design ideas and maybe if you have a different or better design Definitely let me know about that as well You can leave a comment below or you can reach out to me on discord now regarding YouTube comments Some of my videos get a lot of comments, which is 
just awesome and actually a little overwhelming. Some of them have more than 500 comments. Uh, and I unfortunately don't have enough time to reply to everybody, but I read every single one. It's one of the first things I do when I wake up in the morning and it's one of the last things I do before I go to sleep at night. I check the YouTube comments to see what kind of awesome advice you guys are giving or just what kind of stories you guys are sharing. I love reading those. But because I don't have enough time to get replies out to everybody, it may not be the best way to start a dialogue with me. And so if you want to get in touch with me and chat or if you want to contribute to the future of this project or any of the projects that we're working on like the Centurion, the best place to do that is through the Discord chat server. That is, of course, if you uh, won't discriminate against me for using Discord light Um <laughs> But I want to thank you guys uh, so much for watching today. I actually had uh, something else that I really wanted to show you planned, um, but well, we're just out of time and that's actually going to be the very next episode. We're going to have a little short bit on something for the vacuum tube computer and it is very cool. So look forward to that and I hope to see you next week.